I am Sudarshan Khan from Avani Travel Services, a DMC based in Northeast India. The topic of our today's webinar is River Cruise on the Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra is one of the greatest rivers in India and is the lifeline of the people of Assam. Born in the Lake Mansarovar in the Kailash range of the Himalayas, this river traverses through Tibet and China and enters India through the east of in Arunachal Pradesh, where it is referred to as the Siam, and thereafter it enters Assam and with its other tributaries, it becomes the mighty Brahmaputra. As per the Hindu mythology, Brahmaputra is the son of Brahma and the only male river in India. For the deliberation today, we have Regional Director India Tourism in Northeast, Mr. S. S. Dev Parman, and representatives of two prominent cruise companies of Assam, Srimati Shanti Dole of Brahmaputra Cruises Private Limited and Mr. Nirmalya Choudhury of JTI Group. Now I request Mr. S. S. Dev Burman, RD India Tourism, to give the opening remarks. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, congratulate and uh, uh, my heartfelt, heartfelt, uh, heartfelt thanks to the organizer for organizing such a, I mean, important topics, river cruise. So uh, river cruises is supposed to be the very, very important tourism uh, products in our Northeast region, which may give a specific and special momentum for the tourism industry in this region. So it is a quite uh, adventurous, enjoyable, very thrilling, river cruise is always very attractive to, uh, aspect of the tourism. Sudarshan already uh, told about the river mighty Brahmaputra. So I don't uh, require to explain and elaborate the things uh, further. What I would say is that uh, river quizzes of late started getting importance throughout the country from UP to Bihar, from Kolkata, and then Brahmaputra. The rest of the country, I, I mean, I'm talking about a UP or Bihar or Bengal, that river is Ganga or Ganges. But here, we don't know the G G Ganga or Ganges, but we are having the Brahmaputra. The only the male river in our entire subcontinent. So on that river, Cruises become now important aspect for promoting tourism and people are coming to enjoy the particular river cruises only sometimes to Guwahati. Now I do get a lot of uh, query calls from my friends and like colleagues, uh, friends from uh, overseas uh, uh, foreign countries, they uh, want to come to Guwahati and not to see the city, only uh, uh, nobody, uh, I mean, there are certain uh, tourists, you know, I mean, instead of going to Kamakha or some other places, Kamakha is a very important uh, holy places for the Hindus, but for others, Kamakha may not be that uh, attractive. But irrespective of all religion, caste, creed, the tourists who come to Guwahati city, the first motto or objective is to enjoy the river quiz, river quizzes at uh, River Brahmaputra. So you can understand the importance of the or popularity of the river cruises. Cruise on the mighty Brahmaputra uh, already Sudarshan uh, narrated and explained that one of the world's greatest river. The river runs uh, for 1,800 miles from its source uh, in the Tibetan Himalayan to its delta in the Bengal to this beautiful state, Assam. So, I mean, the tourist can enjoy a fabulous range of interesting experience while cruising this magnificent river. It offers something for everybody, for wildlife enthusiasts. It offers a mind-blowing wildlife viewing and bird watching. But to the cultural traveler, it offers a glimpse of, of the varied and colorful ethnic mix of the state in addition to the new classical colonial palaces. Buddhist archaeology. At the same time, so Hindu temple and uh, Islamic architecture also can be 
uh, 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 scene. Cruises on Brahmaputra River are offered by uh, Assam Tourism and uh, by some private operators. Some of these operators operate small tours along Guwahati city, while some operators offer luxury services to Kajiranga and beyond. The cruises uh, cover some of the national parks, including the Kajiranga National Park, uh, World Heritage Site, and Majuli. Majuli is one of the largest riverine island in the world. Brahmaputra cruises features attractions such as wildlife viewing, both by jeep and uh, elephant uh, back after coming, getting down from the, the cruises. Then you can go for a village walk and uh, you can visit once again uh, to my very favorite uh, two tea gardens. Then uh, you can visit the islands. Then uh, you can enjoy dance performances, exploring country towns in the cycle rickshaws and visit to the craft workshops. So these are all ancillary uh, uh, part of uh, the river cruises. So I don't want to. So you have been muted. Uh, so, yeah. uh, 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 could you uh, uh, have no, a... now? Now you're audible. No, uh, but before that, uh, could you uh, uh, the last the last sentence? Uh, we can hear the last sentence. Okay. So, so what, uh, what I want to say is that Brahmaputra cruises features attractions such as wildlife being both by jeep and on elephant back, and you can go for a uh, after getting down from the course uh, from the uh, that. Um, uh, uh, cruises, you can go for a village walk and uh, visit to beautiful, beautiful tea gardens of Assam, and you can enjoy the barbecues on deserted river islands, and once again, can enjoy the dance performances, the famous Assamese uh, dance, you know, and exploring uh, country towns in you know, a cycle rickshaws and visit to the craft workshops. So these are the ancillary uh, kind of uh, the river cruises, which are very, very enjoyable. So, uh, friends, uh, uh, I don't require to explain and elaborate the matter much more because there are much more uh, better learned and uh, knowledgeable persons about river quizzes than me. So now they'll be sharing their uh, knowledge and experience with us. So thank you. Thank you once again. Please, the platform is open for the other resource persons. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will request everyone to type their questions in the chat box and we will take them up after the deliberations are over. Our first speaker this evening is Srimati Shanti Dole. Uh, Srimati Dole holds a MSc degree in agriculture from Assam Agricultural University, Jorhat, and she is also a graduate in law. She is promoter director of Brahmaputra Cruises Private Limited and has, has been helping her husband, Mr. Hemanto Dole, one of the pioneers of river tourism in Assam and she has been associated with him since 1998. She has played a key role in establishing the floating restaurant business as well as organizing ethnic beach food festival on the river Brahmaputra. She is also a culinary expert and has been the judge in food awards conducted by Guwahati Plus magazine. She has also been awarded the Assam Women Entrepreneurs Conclave in 2018. Srimati Dole, uh, I would kindly request us, you to please make the presentation now. Thank you, Sudarshan. Sudarshan, we have a food magazine in uh, Northeast. Uh, there is Guwahati Plus, has, it's a magazine which has a supplement. Can you make it a full fledged food, food, food magazine? Okay, that can be discussed later on. Yeah. Yes, carry on. Uh, Ma'am, uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, yes, can you yes. see my PPT? Yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, your PPT is not we out, can, but, uh, we can share this, like, we can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> can you see it now? 
Uh, no. Yeah, now we can. Can you see? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay. Uh, I think you have to. Thank you, it. thank you, everyone. Uh, Ma'am, I think you have to put it. Can you the, hear me? You have to put it from the beginning. The slideshow from beginning. Yeah, this is the first slide. Uh, look, uh, just click slideshow. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. So I can start my uh, PPT. Yeah. Yeah. So, as Sudarshan has already told you all, I am Shanti Dole, a director of Brahmaputra Cruise Private Limited, and uh, I'm into along with my husband and Debojit Bora, we three are into this business since 1998. And since the topic today is river tourism, so this presentation is an effort to give an overview of different types of river-oriented tourism happening on the river Brahmaputra in Assam. So rivers, as you all know, they are very fascinating places, exhibiting both natural charm and usefulness for a vast array of human activities. Throughout history, rivers have been used as transport routes, as food sources, and in more recent times, as places to visit and play. River cruises are actually very famous now throughout the world. Rivers does provides itself as a major tourism resource providing spectacular settings, recreation facilities, a way of travel, a sense of heritage and adventure, and links with the environment, nature, culture, and history of a place. Let's talk something about the river Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra, as you all know, is a transboundary river and one of the major rivers of Asia. From its origin in the southwest Tibet, it flows through the Himalayas into Arunachal Pradesh, where it is known as Dihang. It further valley as the Brahmaputra. So in Assam, it is called Brahmaputra. In Arunachal, it's called Dihang. And through Bangladesh as the Jamuna. In Bangladesh, it merges with the Ganges uh, before merging into the Bay of Bengal. The length of the river is 2880 kilometer, out of which 1625 kilometer lies in China, 918 kilometer in India, and 337 kilometer in Bangladesh. In China, it's called Yarlung Sangpo. So we have different names for the same river in different countries and different states. Brahmaputra River flowing through the state of from the easternmost point Sadia to the westernmost point Dhupri divides Assam into two parts, the northern and the southern bank. Also, it occupies almost one tenth of the Brahmaputra valleys with and almost every facet of interest to tourists is either intimately connected to or are located within easy reach of the river. We can go to any tourist place from the river. The river actually divides the whole Assam into two very distinct parts, Northern Bank and Northern Bank and Southern Bank. Brahmaputra being navigable throughout the stretch from Sadia to Dhuburi, it is possible to cruise over the river and to cover all major tourist destinations or spots from the river. All major wildlife reserves for which Assam is known are situated on the flood plains of the Brahmaputra and can be brought within the ambit of a waterway cruise. Therefore, in considering the facts, the Brahmaputra River can be highly associated with river tourism activities. Cruising on this river gives a tourist not only the thrill of a cruise across one of the most powerful rivers of the world, but also the diverse experiences that Assam has to offer. So in 1995, the first cruise Jalpuri came up on the river Brahmaputra in Guwahati, which was started by Assam Tourism Development Corporation. In 1998, as B. Alfresco was started by, from, by our company. 
which was followed by 2003 and 2005 RV Charido and RV Sukafa, both by Assam Bengal Navigation. In 2007, our company came up with SB Agam. SB Agam is a houseboat with three rooms. Uh, it can be used for long distance cruises as well as for short cruises to enjoy the river. In 2009, our company came up with MV Manashputra. MV Manashputra is suitable for both long distance cruises and short distance cruises. In 2012, MV Mahabahu start, uh, started. MV Mahabahu is a joint venture of Assam Tourism Development Corporation and Far Horizon. In 2013, MV OM was started. It is in the Upper Assam district of Tinsukia. MV Rudra Singh and RV Charaido 2, these two are again new entrant in the river cruise by Assam Bengal Navigation, the same company which runs RV Charaido and RV Sukafa. This is the first river cruise, Jalpuri, on the bank of Brahmaputra. This is El Fresco. This is RV Charaido, RV Sukafa, SB Agam. As we Agam has a small open deck, so it's very suitable for small parties and gatherings also. This MV Manashputra, MV Mahabahu, MV Om, MV Rudra Singh, RV Charido too. So this were, these were the pictures of the cruises which operates in Assam right now. So let, next, there are some activities and forms on the Brahmaputra. Long distance cruising, as Sir has already said, that is luxury and laser cruises are very famous. So these are the destinations which can be reached from the river, the Kamakya Temple, and then uh, that is Tejpur, then Kaziranga, Majuli, Tea Gardens, and Sipsagar. Uh, this is an aerial view of Guwahati. This view is from the Kamakya Hills. And on the left, you can see the Kamakya Temple. This is Guwahati. These are a few pictures of Kamakya Temple. Tourists, they are enjoying. This is Swalkuchi. Swalkuchi is again, it's called the Silk City of Assam, where the Manchester of Assam actually is called. So it's famous for its silk, part and muka. So, and it is also, um, you can take the river route to reach Swalkuchi. So it's accessible from both river and uh, land. Tourists, they like to see this village also. These are few views from the Swalkuchi village. This is Tejpur, a historical town, which is again, you can go from like, in the long distance cruises, these places, actually we take the tourists to these places. It's a historical town. There are a few temples, then Agnigar is there. You can take a rickshaw ride. This is the famous Kaziranga National Park. Kaziranga National Park is again uh, reachable from the river. So the tourists, they are taken to a place called uh, Silghat and from Silghat, uh, they are taken by vehicles to Kaziranga. Kaziranga, as you all know, is famous for one horn rhino. People go for both elephant ride and jeep ride. Uh, Bishwanath Ghat is another interesting place on the bank of the river. Uh, there's a famous temple, Bishwanath Temple, and a beautiful village. So tourists, they, they just enjoy the village walk in this village. This is a view of Vishwanath temple. It's a very beautiful and very neatly kept temple. Then this is a missing village. Missing is a famous tribe of Assam. Uh, and um, missing peoples are known as the riverine people. Like they generally stay on the bank of the river. The villages are on the bank of the river. 
so a visit to missing village is another attraction for the tourists so this is a picture of tourists enjoying missing bihu this is a missing typical missing village you can see the house the changars changar and that they are very uh, known you can see the clothes they have made themselves then next is the majuli river island majuli river island is the largest river island uh, inhabited river island so the tourists they can go to the satras they enjoy the satriya dance there then the the mask making people they are different different satras in majuli so tourists are taken there to enjoy the to see the culture of assam in these satras then this is the sip sagar sip sagar it's famous for his monuments of the ahom kingdom during the time of the ahom kingdom so tourists are taken to sip sagar from jorhat this is again sip sagar this is the ronghor and jorhat upper assam is also famous for its tea garden so from jorhat the tourists they, are, they can be taken to the tea, for tea garden visit tea factory visit so these are the regular uh, things which are done by us this you can see a tea factory we are trying to i am seeing that they go to for a tea garden visit and tea factory visit and also do tea testing also then there is a so gibbons uh, there is a holongpar gibbons wildlife sanctuary which is uh, near jorhat so that is another tourist attraction you can see gibbons they, these this wildlife sanctuary is famous known for its gibbons so tourists are enjoying the gibbons generally they are taken in the morning time early morning time and the breakfast is served in the sanctuary only so you can see the tourists enjoying the breakfast and so it's a typical uh, next is a typical itinerary which uh, we follow during our long distance cruise so on day one we arrival at guwahati and then the people are taken to a uh, drive to tejpur generally we start our cruises from tejpur and so the tourists they are boarded on in the vessel in, on the day one generally in the late night like at around 8 o'clock they reach next day morning sail to kaziranga so sailing to kaziranga means we reach uh, silghat and from there they are taken to kaziranga for afternoon jeep safari and on day 3 early morning elephant safari is being done then after the elephant safari after uh, during lunch we sail up to vishwanath ghat and the vishwanath temple day 4 is generally whole day we are sailing throughout the day and the evening we have a barbecue dinner on the islands day 5 uh, morning we visit a uh, morning village visit is there the missing village which i had shown in the photographs and then we sail up to majuli and day 6 there is majuli visit uh, in the morning time and uh, by evening we reach nimati ghat at the jorhat and day 7 the there is a morning, morning visit to sipsagar and in the afternoon we, we take the tourist to tea garden Uh, tea gardens and also also to tea garden experimental station tea experimentation station that is experimentation station tra that is at tokla jorhat and day 8 uh, the cruise is over and the tourists are drive, drive to jorhat dibruga airport for the either to jorhat or to dibruga for the onward journey so this is a, like just typical a uh, cruise itinerary So I just uh, 
arrival at Guwahati Airport, visit to Holi Kamakya Day 1, lunch at a resort, drive to Tejpur, boarding of cruise vessel, day 2, morning Tejpur sightseeing, rickshaw ride in Tejpur, sailing to Silghat, afternoon jeep safari. So these are the activities of day 2. And in the evening, we have an onboard cultural dance program performance. Day three, morning elephant safari, another safari on jeeps, sailing to Vishwanath Ghar, Vishwanath Temple, and village visit. Day four, whole day sailing, onboard activities like yoga demo, guest lectures etc. Kaziranga on the right side. While uh, sailing, you can see the Kaziranga on the right side. And it's a barbecue dinner in the evening. Day 5, morning village visit. Day long sailing. Onboard activities like traditional dress, demo, etc. Evening reach near Majuli. Day 6, Majuli Satra visit. Evening sail to Nimati Ghat, Jorhat. Day 7, morning drive to Sivsagar to visit the ruins of the Ahom dynasty. Return to Jorhat, visit a tea garden, TRA. Evening onboard cultural dance. Uh, this is the farewell night. So we have a farewell dinner also after the performance by local artist. Day 8, morning after breakfast, drive to Dibrugge Airport for the onward journey to terminates. So these were a few, few glimpses of the long distance cruising that we are doing. Adventure cruises is another thing which can be done from the river. So this boat is generally used for adventure cruising. So these are a few pictures of the adventure tour cruises. Tents are being set up on the river. This is a missing village visit. The famous mask and houseboat cruises. We have a boat, uh, houseboat with three cabins. So these are the rooms of the care boat. This is suitable for a small group up to six people. Houseboat itinerary is generally, it's similar to, uh, not similar to the long distance cruise. Generally, it starts from Guwahati to Guwahati. Day one is arrival at Guwahati and uh, drive to boarding point on boarding and with lunch sail downstream towards Swalkuchi, the silk weaving village of Assam. And evening reach a deserted island near Swalkuchi for mooring. Later, enjoy a bonfire and barbecue on the sand island. Dinner and overnight stay aboard the houseboat. Day two, sail for an hour or so to reach Swalkuchi, the silk weaving village of Assam. Actually, uh, the houseboat cruises are for one night, uh, two nights, uh, three days, or two nights, two nights, three days. So we go to Swalkuchi and generally take people up to Pobitara. Explore the village and see the silk manufacturing process and execute dress materials of the famous Assam silk. Later, return to the houseboat and start sailing upstream towards our next destination, Kajoli Choki, the conference point of River Kolong and Brahmaputra. Evening, reach near Kajoli Choki and moor at a deserted sand island for the night. Dinner and overnight stay abroad, houseboat SB Agam. 
Day three, early morning with a cup of tea, we disembark the houseboat to drive to Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary for an exciting elephant safari in the sanctuary. After the safari, return back to the houseboat, get freshened up and take breakfast. Later, sail back to Guwahati to disembark the houseboat by noon to drive to Guwahati airport to catch the afternoon evening flight for the onward journey and continue with the scheduled land extension. So this is the end of service in the houseboat. So generally we have a very small itinerary in the houseboats. And beside these cruises, we have short hourly cruises. Short hourly cruises are breakfast cruise, lunch cruise, sunset cruise, sundown cruise, and dinner cruise. Then chartered cruises. We, we charter, uh, people charter our cruises for theme parties, destination conference and meetings, wedding and other ceremonies, island parties, candlelight cruises, day-long picnics, and overnight cruises. These are a few pictures of the theme parties. This is a retro night. This is the conference and meeting conference hall. And this is the island party. Wedding and other ceremonies are being held in the, on the island. It's a typical, it's a view of uh, island party. You can see Guwahati on the back. And on the island parties, we showcase our culture also. So this is a Satya dance performance. So, Yehu dance. Uh, we have some DJ. This is a DJ program. Island party, pictures of island parties, you can see. Uh, beside these parties, we do candlelight cruises also. So this SB Agam is being decorated for candlelight cruises. At the background, you can see the woman in the temple. This is a typical island setup for two people for a candlelight cruise. Day long picnics are also very famous, like the boats are hired for day long picnics. People enjoying. These are the pictures of overnight cruises. We sometimes do one night cruises. Other activities on the river can be white water tourism, eco tourism and trekking, angling, river and beach festivals. These are pictures of this is the picture of Namami Brahmaputra. Future scope for development. Cruise boat hub, model villages, luxury cruiser, floatal, riverfront development, river taxis, hovercrafts, floating entertainment facilities, development of tourism activities on new rivers and tributaries. So these are like future scope for development on the river Brahmaputra. This is just an imaginary picture of a cruise boat hub, model village. Luxury cruiser. Floaters. Riverfront development. Uh, thank you. So this was all I had to say. Thank you.
Thank you, Mrs. Dole. It was a wonderful presentation. Uh, before we go to our next speaker, uh, we just have a short video to share with everyone. Uh, I hope you will enjoy your time in our beautiful ship. In the room, we have a big French balcony. You can sit in your cabin and watching the river flowing by. You can relax over here in the bar. We have lounges on the sun deck. Make yourself comfortable while sipping your gin and tonic. Brahmaputra is very wide and it's a very whimsical river and it's changed courses quite often. In the middle of the Brahmaputra, you will see there are huge sandbanks, not many people around. Majule River Island people are mostly farmer. Their pottery have a different style. It's a beaten clay process. Also, Majule is famous for mask making. There are some Vaishnava monasteries, the Hindu monasteries, where they perform different dance drummers based on mythological story of Hindu religion. The Brahmaputra flows past Ajna National Park, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In the vessel, we could spot some wildlife, like a rhino, elephant, even our tourists have spotted tiger from the vessel and they could take picture of the tiger. That was uh, the landscape you see when you are traveling on the cruise on the Brahmaputra. So our next speaker this evening is Mr. Nirmala Chaudhary, who is a postgraduate in tourism management from IITTM Bhubaneswar. He worked in New Delhi for a few years before returning to his home state in Assam in 2002 and joined Jungle Travels India. As a guide and tour escort, he had led individuals and groups to cultural and special interest tours throughout Northeast and Eastern India. He was also a part of, of the pioneering Assam Bengal navigation team that had established India's first long distance inland waterways cruises on the Brahmaputra River. He has sailed on the Brahmaputra and the Ganga for many years, leading guests from around the world on these discovery voyages to the heart of rural India. He is currently executive director of operations of JTI Group and also IATO Chapter Chairman of Northeast States. Mr. Nimalu Chaudhary, uh, I would kindly request you to make your presentation now.
Thank you, Sudarshan. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, wonderful presentation by uh, Shanti ji as well. She has covered beautifully the entire gamut of experiences that is available on the Brahmaputra Valley. Uh, I'll just start sharing my screen as well. Here goes. I hope you all can see the full screen. Uh, am I audible? Can you all hear me? You are. Okay. So I am here to talk primarily of the Brahmaputra River and our experiences on the river. And I represent here uh, um, our company, the Assam Bengal Navigation. Uh, we started this company back in 2003. It's an Indo-British joint venture, one of the first foreign direct investment in tourism in the Eastern India to set out uh, luxury river cruises. We started on the Brahmaputra River at that time. Since then, uh, you know, we have spread our operations across uh, to the Ganges as well. Um, so, uh, in this screen, you can see the two great rivers of India. Also, uh, inland waterways, national waterway number one, that is Ganges, and national waterway number two, that is Brahmaputra. We operate uh, four cruise vessels on these two waterways for clients from around the world and also from various parts of India. Uh, in 2003, we started operating with our first cruise vessel, the Avian Charaidyo. One, uh, it has 12 cabins and it operated, uh, in a, it, it is still in operation on the Brahmaputra River. In 2006, we added our second vessel built more or less on the same style as the first one. This is a design aspect of the vessel that we carried through all our cruise vessels. This looks more or less the same way as passenger and cargo vessels used to look back in the 1940s, 50s till about 1960s that used to ply on these national waterways. In 2014, we built our third and our flagship vessel, the ABN Rajmahal, which operates primarily on the Ganges. And in 2018, we added our second vessel on the Brahmaputra, that is uh, ABN Charaido 2. Moving on, uh, you know, about the river, uh, you know, respective speakers before me have already covered most of the important points about this, about the river itself. But when people travel on the Brahmaputra River, I always tell them that the star of the show is always the river itself. Uh, believe you me, if you have not been on the Brahmaputra River, you have not really experienced the majesty and the grandness of the river that exists in our country. Uh, closer to the Bangladesh border before in, in that area, the river can be as wide as between 22 to 25 kilometers. At Guwahati, where we have the bridge uh, connecting the north and the south bank of the river, is, the river is only one kilometer wide. And uh, as you go, continue going upstream towards Upper Assam, the river continues to grow wider and wider as much as 15, 16 kilometers wide in places. The Brahmaputra has many names. It is. It starts off as Yarlung Sangpo, Siang in Arunachal Pradesh, Brahmaputra in Assam. After entering the delta areas of Bangladesh, it also meets up with the other great river, the Ganges, and the combined flow that goes into the Bay of Bengal is known as the Jamuna. And uh, <clears throat> in a the the Brahmaputra River Valley is a rich land. It houses many different cultures that has uh, you know, converged in this area for centuries, many different languages, many different cultures, food, uh, you know, different cuisines, different ethnic traditions abound for people to come and experience. One of the best things about traveling on the river is you come on board, you do not have, you know, you can compare it with traveling overland in India every day or two, you are checking into a new hotel, you are packing, unpacking every couple of days, uh, you know, driving long distances to get to one from one place to another. Here on the river, you check in and you stay on board like a second home of yours in great company of other passengers and your accompanying uh, service people. 
you meet like-minded people and you get to experience a part of India that is rarely visited by visitors to India or even within India, we ourselves, many of us have not experienced the majesty of the rivers, particularly Brahmaputra. <clears throat> on the Brahmaputra, the primary route that we operate our river cruises on are primarily, if you look at the lower left hand corner of your screen, the Guwahati city, the major city where that is on the banks in Guwahati and going upstream towards, you can see Jorhat more or less in the center of the screen. This is a stretch as the crow flies is at approximately just over 300 kilometers, but a river takes a meandering course. So it is sometimes as close to 400 kilometers river journey. And that is the stretch of the river we primarily limit our operations to, especially with our larger vessels because most of the cruises are operated in the winter months when most of the wildlife parks remain open for visitors. And uh, as uh, during the winter months, of course, the water level starts going down. So this is the most feasible part of the river for the winter months. Of course, with specialized vessels, smaller vessels with lower draft, one can sail the entire stretch of the river on the, uh, between Bangladesh border all the way upstream towards Sadia in the upper Assam area. So <clears throat> the river is a grand experience. People come on board, they, you know, Guwahati is very well connected with the rest of the country. All major airports are also connected and Guwahati is a home port for all our cruise vessels. So as soon as you start leaving Guwahati, during your voyage, uh, this is a place just opposite the Guwahati city on the northern bank, a beautiful temple on a hilltop overlooking the river and the city on the other side of the river. We take people accompanied by our uh, you know, guides, a naturalist, they are accompanying our clients all the time during their onshore visits. This is another scene from the northern side of the river towards Guwahati city. This is the you know, entrance to the Grand Temple on the smallest river island on the Brahmaputra River, the one on the temple, the staircases leads towards that. Sunsets and sunrises are always spectacular on the river. You come across many grand sites. Just being on the river, it might look just like a very placid river very, you know, very easy flow on the water from, from what you get to see from top. But believe you me, the river is great. It has extreme currents just underneath. The river bed is constantly shifting. You know, in terms of discharge of water, the entire collection of rivers in our country releases approximately 1,700 billion cubic meters of water into the seas every year. Out of this 1,770 BCM, around 600 billion cubic meter of water is released only by the Brahmaputra River. Just to give you an idea of the water carrying capacity of the great Brahmaputra River. Our clients, as my previous speaker has said, uh, you know, the Brahmaputra River goes past many national parks. Of course, Kajiranga being the most primary one, being a you know, national park, a tiger reserve, a unique a union, uh, I mean, uh, UNESCO declared uh, heritage site for nature. We take clients for onshore excursions almost every day. Uh, they are accompanied by our in-house guides and naturalists, and they get to visit some of these beautiful parts of the state of Assam, not very far from the river. We also visit many archaeological sites. This is a this is Ranga from the uh, old Ahom era ruins of uh, the old Ahom capital of Sipsagar is frequented by our clients. Uh, clients get off the vessel, they walk through sometimes high grassland like this to reach the other side for a village visit. We a small country boat, just like this one, always accompanies our large boats so that uh, getting off the vessel to any destination is never a, never a very complicated process. You just get into the tender boat, 
sail short distances to get to the places where your vehicles will be waiting to take you for your excursions, etc. People get to ride cycle rickshaws in the town of Tejpur and a few other places. They go on rafting trips through the Nameri National Park, again, not terribly far from the Brahmaputra River itself. And at the end of the day, you get back to the vessel, back home, relax on the sun deck, read a book, or just take a short nap. Our vessel, Avian Charaidu, through which our journey in river cruising started, is a small vessel, just around 38 meters long. It has 12 cabins, all on the upper deck. A dining and the pantry is on the main deck. And it has a fantastic sun deck where clients spend most of the time during sailing, uh, enjoying the views of the river uh, while sailing. Uh, some of the pictures of the vessel, uh, Avian Chennai, the one, we are uh, contemplating using it more like a floating hotel for Majuli Island. We are planning to take this vessel from Guwahati, take it somewhere very close to the Majuli Island where people can stay on board and visit not only Majuli, but also the Huluk given wildlife sanctuary, the archeological sites of Srip Sagar, the tea estates of Jorhat. There are many attractions and easily two or three nights can be spent on board like a floating hotel instead of staying in more basic properties that is available on uh, on the island itself. There are some more uh, pictures of the vessel, Charai the uh, one and the different services that we uh, provide while sailing with us. Our second vessel, Avian Sukafa, this one is also built with just 12 cabins, almost a replica, but slightly larger vessel than Charaido 1. This also has 12 cabins. The last two cabins you can see in the violet color right at the end of the vessel. The stern end of the vessel, cabin 11 and 12 are double bedded cabins. The rest are configured twin or double. Uh, these are all, uh, all the cabins are on the upper deck and the restaurant, pantry, etc., are on the main deck. The upper deck also houses this fairly large lounge for people to gather together in the evening, share their stories of the day, get briefed about the next day's activities. And we, we make sure that every evening a lecture is delivered on various aspects of the river, the destinations that clients are visiting, and uh, different experiences that they're likely to get. We make sure that while clients are traveling with us on the river, they do get to know the different cultures that they're encountering. So if we are visiting a village on the river bank, we make sure that our clients get to talk to the local schoolmaster, the local graduates. Wonderful thing about Assam is almost every village you go, you will always find one or two people, sometimes way more, who speaks fluent English and can converse with your clients either in English or in Hindi. So uh, the experiences that clients have are more interactive experiences and they're not limited by their guides and what the guide tell them alone. They get to talk and meet and interact with the local people, the, the host communities, so that they go back enriched with an experience that is wholesome. These are some of the pictures of the vessel ABN Sukafa. ABN Sukafa is currently, has been for the last uh, quite a few years, has been operating on the Ganges. But this year, at the end of this year, 2020, we are planning to bring her back to Assam and she will be sailing from 2021. Hopefully, she will start sailing on the Brahmaputra again. This is our uh, vessel, the ABN Charaido 2 which also operates on specifically, exclusively on the Brahmaputra River. This is our latest vessel. It joined our fleet only last year. And <clears throat> this vessel has, uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, 12, uh, 14, uh, 16 cabins on the upper deck. As you can see, slightly sky blue color right at the front are the two luxury cabins. The rest, the cabins from uh, number three to 14 are all on the upper deck. On the main deck also we have four cabins fitted with queen-sized beds so they can sleep too, but also 
if somebody wants to stay uh, travel alone they can be housed in there and they do not have to pay the single supplement these are fairly large sized cabins very comfortable with ensuite facilities uh, hot and cold shower all in in all cabins of all our vessels uh, air conditioned all public areas are air conditioned except the open areas such as sun deck etc so main deck houses the the gallery galley and the pantry the dining area the four cabins gym and spa also on the main deck and on the upper deck are the 16 cabins and on the on the you know uh, on the sun deck is an open area and also the salon where every day the guests get together for their daily briefings for their drinks and this is where most of the time is spent while sailing on the Brahmaputra river some pictures of the newest vessel i would like to share with you this is one of the cabins of the vessel <clears throat> this is the luxury cabin right at the fore end of the vessel that I was telling you about. This is the stone on the sun deck. This is the open area of the sun deck, the restaurant. These are some of the itineraries, the regular itineraries that we operate on the Brahmaputra River. The first itinerary, we call it Rhinos and Moor. It starts at Guwahati and finishes at a place called Silghat, not terribly far from the Kajiranga National Park. Only around, it takes only a little less than an hour's drive actually to reach Kajiranga National Park from there. So this is a seven night itinerary covering a lot of different destinations, villages. Uh, Nameri National Park is also covered as well as Kajiranga is the highlight that this cruise ends with followed by our other itinerary, which we call the River Island Cruise. Also a seven night itinerary starts at Silgat Park and sails all the way upstream, slightly beyond the Majuli Island and stops at Jorhat town, which is well connected to Calcutta. If somebody wants direct flight to other destinations, they can, they have the option of driving a little distance away to Dibruga and catch a flight from there as well. And then the return journey. Remember these two previous itineraries that I talked about is going upstream of Guwahati, seven nights plus another seven nights. And this entire stretch downstream coming down the river, starting at Nimati and finishing at Guwahati is a 10 nights cruise, our most popular cruise itinerary by the way on the Brahmaputra river. Uh, and uh, you know, this covers all the destinations, uh, not you know, close to the river. And uh, clients get to experience many different dance forms, many different lectures by experts. I, we try to bring on board journalists, uh, you know, writers, bureaucrats, tea estate owners, tea estate managers, local monks, if we are passing through Majuli, so that clients get to interact again while on board as well with experts in different subjects to learn more about the destination that they are traveling. Traveling with us, we make sure that it's not just plain entertainment or just a plain holiday. It is an experience and an enriching experience for the people to learn about the destination and the host communities that they interact with during their travel with us. We also have a very small program that starts and ends at Guwahati. It goes a little downstream towards a place called Vijayanagar where we end at, we also stop at Hualkusi where people get to see different aspects of weavings, particularly the very endemic silk weaving tradition that we have in Assam, the Muga silk. We also visit a few archeological sites on the Northern side of the river. We visit Guwahati, the different sites within the city of Guwahati. Then we sail a little upstream towards the Pobitara Wildlife Sanctuary uh, also. So it has a little bit of everything and it is just four nights long. So this is the shortest itinerary that we operate on the Brahmaputra River using our vessels that I have already shown you. Uh, besides the larger cruise vessels that I showed you, we also have small houseboats. In 2017, we launched our first houseboat called MB Rudra Singha 1. 
which has only a single kin and fit for two people with a small lounge right at the front of the vessel, which also has a rollout bed. So a small family of two with two children can be housed there. You, our clients get the services of a private chef, uh, you know, uh, two mariners, one storyteller come manager come guide at their disposal during the during their stay on board now this can be hired for a day can be hired for a couple of days the longest cruise that we do with this vessel is of 14 nights duration where a couple spends you know 14 nights they usually start right at the uh, at the highest part of the river that is sadia or very close to the dibrugar and they sail all the way down to the Bangladesh border, covering the entire stretch of Brahmaputra with us. We are also building a second uh, houseboat on the similar fashion. It will be called the Rudra Singha 2. Now this one will have two cabins, if sleeping four, on the lounge area, maybe one person more. And this can be used in many different ways. The entire river is there. We do not have any fixed itineraries for these two small cruise vessels. People need to tell us their idea, the time at their disposal, and they can have the vessel for as long as they want with them. These are some of the experiences that we cater on the Brahmaputra River for our private guests and exclusive cruising clients. You can see the different areas of the vessel on this picture. At the very end, I'd like to finish with our ABN Foundation, the Assam Engel Navigation Foundation, which donates, uh, it is an entirely self-funded foundation. 5% uh, of each cabin that we sell goes into this foundation to be spent on various areas such as education, environment, and community development. We support a small group of ladies in Kaziranga National Park who are expert weavers. We help sell their products. We uh, support uh, three schools, two in Bengal, one currently in Assam, and we are going to add more. And we also conduct various nature appreciation workshop in with support from various nature uh, nature related NGOs, etc. Uh, to to you know, to increase the awareness and appreciation of what we have around us naturally, we do not appreciate it enough. Thank you. And this is the small experience that I wanted to share with you. Uh, might I add again, there is way more on the Ganges that we do, but today's discussion is limited to Brahmaputra River. Come stay with us, travel with us and experience the majesty of Brahmaputra and the Brahmaputra Valley with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. That was a very informative and in-depth presentation. Uh, I'm sure our guests liked it and have gained some knowledge about the cruises and Brahmaputra. Uh, before we answer some of the questions which uh, some of the guests have put in, I have a question for uh, Mrs. Dole. Uh, like we have, uh, you, your main product in Guwahati now is the Brahmaputra evening cruises, the sunset and the sundown and the dinner cruises. So uh, can you tell me more about some of the products that, uh, that you do like uh, for the cruises? More on that cruise. Uh, now, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. here. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Darshan, for the question. Uh, so, every, uh, as, like, uh, since lots of tourists are coming to Assam now and uh, they spend the night in Guwahati. So our evening cruises are very famous. Like we have three cruises every evening, the sunset cruise, the sundown cruise, and the dinner cruise. The sunset and the sundown cruise is a, an hour long cruise. And during that cruise, people generally they enjoy the sunset, they see the river, and we have some live music performance. And the dinner cruise, it's a two hour cruise. And during that cruise, we showcase our culture in the form of uh, Satriya dance, the Gayon Bayon, the Bihu, and uh, some live singing, and which is followed by dinner. And uh, beside that, we have, uh, since we have the bar also on the cruise, so people generally, they enjoy 
a drink also on the bar uh, on the cruise during the cruises so these are very famous cruises these hourly cruises uh this this which we are doing in guwahati yeah, thank you mr dawar this is very popular with the domestic tourist as well as the local people of guwahati yes we have been promoting those those and so we know about them so it's lovely yeah. and if you have guests coming in so that is most recommended in guwahati uh, mr chauri i have one question like uh, when we talk about long cruises uh, what are the best time like on the brahmaputra to like when does your cruise starts like from which period to which period do you have the cruising period well this year we do not know <laughs> but normally our cruises on the brahmaputra river starts in the middle of october usually in the last week of october just before the park national park starts opening so you know uh, so we start at guwahati and by the time we reach close to kaziranga national park the formal opening day is the 1st of uh, november so we get there just as the park opens for visitors and we continue sailing till uh, usually till uh, the first or second week of may so this is the stretch that we are operating on the brahmaputra river uh, late october till early may thank you uh, we have got a few questions that have come in um, one is uh, what is the tariff for the long distance cruises like what you start starting range of cruise so so within within this period between october uh, late october till early may there are certain uh, times when the requirement or the demand goes up or demand goes down a little bit since uh, traditionally most of our clients were from abroad uh, everybody knows that around the holiday season in the christmas and around that time the air fares uh, from europe increases hugely so that is sort of a time for us to lower our prices a little bit so during the season the prices goes up and down a little bit but what we have is for all our cruises are op cruise departure dates are published for two seasons if you go to our website now assamengalnavigation.com you can see all the fixed departure dates for 2021 as well as for 21 22 is already published and each departure date will mention which itinerary this date will be operated on and the specific price applicable to that particular departure date so our prices can be accessed for all our departures in our website assamengalnavigation.com thank you thank you very much um there is another question which has come up what is the percentage of indians that travel in cruises and what the percentage of foreigners which travel in cruises so Un unfortunately a percentage of domestic travelers in our cruises are very low especially for the longer duration cruises for short duration cruise we do get clients primarily from the south or from the uh, so maharashtra etc and from the southern states but for longer duration we have uh, noticed that the clients interest probably is on shorter duration cruises so we will probably look at it in future to in increase the number of shorter duration cruises to accommodate the interest of domestic cruises but for our small cruise vessels those houseboats that i mentioned there the story is completely reverse the interest among the domestic travelers for these private and exclusive experiences are more so that is getting booked primarily by the domestic clients from all around the country Yeah, I think that will be also for Mrs. Uh, Dole also. I think you have more of Indian guests traveling than foreigners with you, I guess. Yeah, right now we are catering more more of the domestic tourists. Like in the evening cruises, uh, mostly we have domestic tourists and the local tourists, and even the houseboat cruises. Of course, they have a mix of both domestic and uh, foreign tourists. And uh, since we have. Uh, almost stop the long distance cruises so we are now focusing mostly on the domestic tourist <coughs> and also uh, there is one question which has come up uh, in uh, which is the safety measures that uh, 
post covid what are the safety measures that are we adopting for cruises uh, yeah. we haven't yet started our cruises as of now but of course since uh, we generally cater like for the mass tourists so we have to uh, see of certain things like the social distancing we have to maintain that and then on arrival we'll have will be checking the um temperature and all this the regular things we'll be doing and hygiene of course we always look into it but we'll be extra careful post covid hopefully uh, mr chauri uh... Uh, on this aspect i must say that because of our association we primarily clients from europe and you know how stringent the uh, you know contracts with european companies in terms of uh, health and safety as well as for uh, you know uh, health measures so we have decided to escalate the already existing measures to a completely new level altogether this new document for our health and safety measures has already been uploaded in our website people can access it and people who are interested to contact with us they can write to us and we will let them know in further detail about what measures we are taking uh, more or less in line with other existing uh, river cruise companies that is operating whether it's on the danube or on the nile or on the other european rivers so it is going to be more or less of the same standard we can't hear you sudarshan ah uh, sir can you hear me now yes yeah thank you that was very informative and also uh, there was one question like uh, i think this will be for mr choudhury uh, like uh, what are the what is like you cruises what is the category like it's a five star five star deluxe which category do you fall in uh difficult to say we never apply. so what we did is when we built our vessel we tried to see luxury is a very subjective term and so what we have tried to do on our vessel is make sure that the basic levels of comfort is absolutely cleared off so you can definitely say if you want to compare it with a five star hotel yes you will find exactly the same amenities that is provided in a five star hotel but is our vessel a five star graded vessel no it is not we have not applied for it uh, nor do we plan to do it right away because uh, you know then there are certain things that is not quite applicable for cruise vessels per se as per the existing standards but uh, it is what we like to call it is more conscious luxury so our decor and amenities also reflect where you are so if you are sailing on the brahmaputra our vessel uh, reflects the sense of being in assam whether it's hand woven curtains or linens that is sourced from local weavers etc so you know that gets reflected in every cabin in every public area of the vessel thank you uh, thank you both of you i think we are coming to the end of our session uh, it was really informative uh, it was even a learning lesson for me to even i am promoting this cruises and tourism here uh, now i would request our assistant director mr dk mondel to please offer the vote of thanks uh mr mondel i st- i'm i think he's logged out he's not here so uh just just just, just give me give, give me some few seconds give me few seconds okay he's here Dina, welcome. We are here. Dina, please. Hello. Good morning, Dina. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. First of all, I must thank our Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, who has given an opportunity to organize this kind of webinar. I also thank our regional director, India Tourism Guwahati, for his valuable suggestions. Thanks to Mr. Nebula Chaudhary 
and they will be for for giving the information on the on the viewer this we have a great thank to mr sudarshan kumar of abhinav travel and safari tours thank you thank you sudarshan thank you thank you sir uh, thank you everyone we'll meet again uh, very shortly with our next topic again on friday thank you thank you everyone for joining in thank you thank you sudarshan thank you rd sir and have a good evening thank you right. thank you everyone thank you thank you please